You may think this is a pretty ornamental grass, and it is in one way, I suppose, but this is actually a herb, a culinary herb. It's called lemongrass. I'll, I'll take one leaf or two leaves, crush them, put them into the uh, hot water or pour the almost boiling water over the leaves, and it can be mixed with lemon verbena uh, or other lemon-flavored uh, herbs like lemon balm or other herbs and get a very nice taste. The stems can be taken out, chopped up, and used in stir-fry. A lot of the Asian uh, chefs like to use it that way. But if you use it for nothing more than an ornamental plant in the garden, it's very good. It's called lemongrass. It's called pond cypress or taxodium ascendens as opposed to the regular ball cypress. And as you can see, it's more upright and in growth, and the, uh, the foliage is totally different. It's filament-like, and it spirals around the, uh, the twigs. The squirrels are the biggest problem I've got in my backyard, biggest pest I've got. And one of the problems here is I didn't plant the tree in the best of all places, right above the swimming pool. And the squirrels love to feed on, especially at this time of the year, late in the or later in the season, they like to feed on these cones, the fruit, and make a mess in the pool, so I have to be careful. These little ginkgo trees I grew myself from seed, and uh, it's fairly easy to, uh, to do. You simply harvest the fruit as it falls on the ground in the fall. Some people think that that's a problem, that the female trees produce the fruit and it's real stinky. And it can be if you leave the fruit there. But if you, if you pick the fruit up as it falls and either discard it or do what I do, uh, take the pulp off of the uh, seed, getting the seed a little cleaner than this and then storing it in the refrigerator for about 60 days, I think is the key. And then all you do after that simply is to plant the seed in potting soil just under the surface of the soil. Water it in. Let me get a little water here. And you can grow your own uh, your own ginkgos. This is lemon verbena, another one of the lemon scented herbs, and it's a good one for using in uh, herb teas or even in flavoring foods. Very pleasant uh, fragrance. It's not as tough as some of the perennials we talk about. I, it really needs to be treated more as an annual, although this one's been here now for about four years. If we have mild winters, it will come back, but don't think that it'll be a tough perennial long term. Mexican uh, petunia, or ruelia, is one of my perennials that has really taken over a large percentage of the garden, and I'll show you why. This is a darker color. Uh, a pink color, these a little taller, but some of the uh, Ruelia you'll see along the walkway here are very low. This one's called Katy Road, and um, it has escaped both the dark purple and the pink, and I don't mind it until it's too hard to walk down the path, but it will pop up all over the garden. I don't consider it too invasive because it's easy to pull out. This is the bay. This is another one of my favorite plants. This is the bay you cook with. A lot of people think that bay is a, a tender plant as far as the winter goes, but as you can see, mine's not having a lot of trouble outside. This plant has been in pots and in the ground in, uh, well, basically since we've been here on this property, and I may have even had it before that. It's uh, over 20 feet tall now and still growing and has never even browned on the tips during uh, the winter. So people that tell you bay needs to be protected in the winter, remind them about this bay. One of the uh, things that I like to play with is texture in the garden. And you can see some nice contrast here, the plants with small texture, and then these with very large leaves. This is rice paper plant. It's aggressive, it's a perennial that'll spread, but it's fairly easy to pull up if it gets in an area you don't want. And this is alocasia. Uh, there's two different kinds of elephant ears, alocasia and colocasia. Alocasia is the more upright one like this, real tough. It's a nice perennial, uh, especially uh, in my part of the country, in North Texas. But it'll grow in a, a lot of the south and come back year after year. Calocasia, uh, tends to weep a little bit more and not be quite so upright. But all of these very large textured uh, plants make a very nice contrast in the garden.